Uh, for the rest of the year, I will be uh, shorting U.S. stocks. Noriel Rubini expressed his concern and suggested shorting the stock. He isn't the only one. Several economists have warned the U.S. government and its citizens about the state of the economy for several years. The fact that the U.S. economy is in big trouble is getting more evident, which is why popular economist Noriel Rubini expressed his concern and suggested shorting the stock. I will share his reasons behind this claim and suggestions in this video. During an interview with Bloomberg TV, economist Noriel Rubini made the shocking revelation of cutting short U.S. stocks through the remainder of 2023, affirming his prediction that a 10% decline is likely. Let's hear it from Rubini. You talked about a 10% decline in equities. We're going to switch up the pace. Fast answer, rapid fire here. I want to get to that call. Tell me where you land on stocks at this moment. Would you want to be shorting or going long American stocks? Uh, for the rest of the year, I will be uh, shorting U.S. stocks. All right. And is that a 10% decline? Is that still about where you think we could land? Uh, it's, it's highly possible, given what's happened in the U.S. and the global economy and rising oil prices and inflation being still sticky and the Fed and other central banks not being done yet. Popularly called Dr. Doom for a convincing reason, Rubini is a professor of economics at the New York University Stern School of Business and the CEO of Rubini Macro Associates. He is known for his prophetic economic forecasts. As we all know, this man spotted the 2008 U.S. housing bust and the subsequent great financial crisis. He has warned the nation since 2022 that a U.S. recession is inevitable and a global stagflationary debt will follow. He even explained how the stock will be affected by the economic recession and the sharp drop in the S and P 500 despite a recent rebound from its October low. Rubini shared his perspective in this clip. Well, you know, even if you had a short and shallow recession, typically from peak to throw, the S and P 500 falls by 30 percent. Rubini didn't fail to point at the slower global growth and a high inflation environment as the current threats to watch out for as they are surely coming. Even though we felt it intensely. While the U.S. stocks may drop 10%, as said, other markets around the world may see equities drop off even more. Let's listen to Rubini's claim. Call just for American stocks, Noriel, or globally, are you looking dour on equities? Well, in the rest of the world, it's even worse than the United States. In the U.S., you might have a bumpy landing, but in the Eurozone, the U.K., we're talking about inflation and recession, stagflation, China is slowing down sharply, so the rest of the world is even worse than the United States. You might now think the U.S. economy is bad while the rest of the world is worse, but that isn't to make the government relent. A 2% inflation rate is impossible. According to the New York Times, the U.S. has a lower inflation rate of 3.7% compared to England's 3.9%. Meanwhile, that's the U.K.'s lowest in two years. Still, it is a misconception for the markets to assume the Fed will start easing rates. This is impossible because of the unpredictable nature of inflation. It may rise at any time. Also, oil prices are increasing, and there is a potential for another surge, as shown in the graph. Although he expects the Fed to maintain its monetary tightness to counteract inflation, Rubini does not expect the central bank to bring inflation back towards the 2% target rate. Instead, the global economy is slipping into an era of stagflationary instability, noting that supply and demand-side components will make achieving the 2% rate impossible. Factors such as restricted migration, an aging population, geopolitics, industrial reshoring, and deglobalization will reduce growth and raise production costs. Meanwhile, Government spending will also climb to counteract the coming crisis, such as growing inequality and climate change. But with the U.S. federal deficits already surging, this will force the Fed to monetize debt, pressuring inflation. He even forecasted that the normal inflation rate would stick around 3%-4% in developed economies. Let's hear from him. The 2% is at this point mission impossible, and the new normal may be somewhere between 3 and 4% for advanced economies. Soft landing. 
Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's characterization of the row ahead for the U.S. economy has been glum since the start of 2022. In March, Powell targeted a soft landing, where the Fed's interest rate hikes would tame inflation without sparking a recession. But two months later, with inflation running hot, the Fed chair began waffling, saying the economy would probably see something more like a softish landing. Powell acknowledged that his policies would undoubtedly bring some pain to consumers and businesses, leading analysts to believe that the Fed was now targeting a growth recession. According to Rubini, it's much worse than that, and any claim for a soft landing is delusional. He predicted the country would have a recession, stagflation, and other severe financial crises. Even more alarmingly, he argues that it may not matter if central bank officials continue raising rates to fight inflation or if they wimp out and cut rates, fearing a recession. This trend reached 2023 when commodity prices became more volatile amid climate and geopolitical shocks, a serious risk to disinflation. Between June and late September last year, oil prices had increased by about 25% amid extended supply cuts by the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and selected non-members before falling back by about 11%. This will be better explained with the chart provided. Food prices remain elevated, inflicting greater hardship on many low-income countries. Geoeconomic fragmentation has also led to a sharp increase in the dispersion of commodity prices across regions, including critical minerals. This could pose severe macroeconomic risks, including to the climate transition. And while both underlying and headline inflation have decreased, they remain uncomfortably high. Near-term inflation expectations have risen above target, although they now appear to be turning a corner. In addition, Many countries have eroded fiscal buffers with elevated debt levels, rising funding costs, slowing growth, and an increasing mismatch between the growing demands on the state and available fiscal resources. This leaves many countries, including the U.S., more vulnerable to crises and demands a renewed focus on managing fiscal risks. The economy is getting worse. The Economist believes that the Fed isn't willing to do what it takes to prevent this stagflationary era and will eventually give up on raising interest rates because there will be more than just some pain coming for the global economy. According to him, this is just the beginning of the pain. The real one might crack up a major financial institution and make it go under. He also mentioned the Lehman effect, remembering the epic crash of 2008. Rubini was referencing the collapse of 161-year-old financial services powerhouse Lehman Brothers, a moment widely seen as the turning point that led to the great financial crisis. Lehman's bankruptcy led to a 4.5% one-day drop in the Dow Jones Industrial Average on September 15, 2008. It caused mass withdrawals from mutual funds, leading many banks to the edge of failure. The Fed responded to the collapse by slashing interest rates and stepping in to save other banks. At the same time, Congress passed the $700 billion Troubled Asset Relief Program to stabilize the financial system. Rubini believes that if another lemon-level financial institution goes bust this time, the Fed will stick to its old playbook and wimp out on rate hikes. Let's hear directly from him. And the economy is slowing down very sharply. I don't think they'll be able to be tough on inflation. They're going to wimp out and they're going to dodge it and they're going to postpone any finishing of tapering or raising rates. Rubini's suggestion could work. Still, he noted that if he were leading the Fed, he would continue raising interest rates to fight inflation, no matter the costs, because a return to the high inflation and low growth of the 1970s would be a disaster. Let's hear what he said. What they should be doing is actually hiking rates all the way to at least 575. The signals are telling us right now is they're not sure whether they want even to hike more. If that happens, there could be a de-anchoring of inflation expectation. And you could have a true stagflation. With this, it is more sensible to hike the rate, even though more rate hikes will surely cause a recession. However, avoid stagflation rather than avoid stagflation and go for a more severe recession. In the 1980s, for example, 
Then-Fed Chair Paul Volcker took a hardline stance against the stagflation that plagued the U.S. economy during the prior decade, and his policies sparked a double-dip recession. As prices continue to increase across a broad range of spending categories, many Americans find that their paychecks aren't going as far as they used to. That's probably because in June 2022, the year-over-year -year inflation rate, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, was a whopping 9.1%, the highest it's been in over four decades. The graph will illustrate the data for better understanding. Gas Price Decline Although the gas price is sinking, inflation was mostly unchanged due to underlying price pressures like apartment rents, restaurant meals, and many other services, which remained stubbornly high. Most economists expect the rate of price increases to keep slowing in the coming months. Though the decline could follow a bumpy path, they want inflation to fall closer to the Fed's 2% target by the end of 2024. Wages and rental prices, among other items, are gradually increasing. In November 2023, much cheaper gas held down overall prices, which rose 0.1% from October. Compared with a year ago, inflation dipped to 3.1%, down from a 3.2% year-over-year rise in October, as shown in the chart. According to the American Automobile Association, AAA, the national average for gas prices stood just below $3.25. That's down 25 cents from a month ago and 30 cents less than last year. Experts point to a recent decline in oil prices and a seasonal dip in demand, as well as easing inflation. According to Patrick DeHaan, head of petroleum analysis at GasBuddy, each penny decline in the national average saves motorists close to $3.8 million. But does that ease inflation? Prices in the vast service sector, though, still surge uncomfortably fast. Core prices, which exclude volatile food and energy costs and are considered a better guide to the path of inflation, rose 0.3% from October to November, slightly faster than the 0.2% increase the previous month, as shown in the graph. Stock market and leap years. While there is no significant reason why stocks behave in such a particular fashion during a leap year, the seasonality effect is too strong to ignore. Leap has a rich history of depressing investors with big crashes, as was noticed in 1992, 2000, 2008, and even 2020. A study of market performance since 1984 revealed that the average annual returns in all 10 leap years have been less than 8%, while the returns in non-leap years have been much higher at 23%. The pictorial representation is in the chart. The labor market is the primary risk for the stock market in 2024. Consumers already suffer from higher prices after such a prolonged period of inflation. So, a sharp rise in unemployment would severely impair consumers and risk the market's ability to hit the lofty earnings predictions that are currently being forecasted. Inflation needs to show continued improvement. Additional interest rate hikes are more likely if it doesn't, which will present a headwind for stock valuations. A few interesting data points on the inflation front also bear watching. For instance, while consumer price index data for November show shelter costs increased 6.5% yearly, the real estate website Zillow's observed rent index rose 3.3% over the same period. It is depicted on the graph. As Rubini said, other market stocks declined more than the U.S. stocks in Europe and Wall Street fell along with prices for U.S. government debt on ebbing market optimism about timely interest rate cuts from the Federal Reserve. According to Yahoo Finance, the dollar jumped against major currencies as the yield on the 10-year Treasury note, which moves inversely to price, rebounded to trade above 4% early in the day, a sign of lowered expectations for rate cuts this year. The government is trying to assure the nation and its citizens that nothing is wrong. At the same time, Rubini warns us about the peril the country is in. Should we be rest assured that the Fed will fix it? It's a split decision. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more financial tips.
See you at the next one.